And my understanding is more cities are in the pipeline statewide. It's a big issue everywhere. Pending new cities include the Vista Hills, Lakeside, Briarclaw, Briarcliff, and Stonewall. There are hurdles to be overcome, but there's a much better process today than there was in the past. It requires a majority only of the affected area. The rest of the county would not vote on it. To do this, you need the support of your legislator, though. You don't get anywhere without that. And currently, they are opposed to incorporation. They have suggested remedies like community improvement districts. Those work well in certain circumstances, but really are not appropriate for what we're trying to do. I can't think of or know of any other alternative uh, than incorporation to doing what we need to do here. But it's going to take your help to persuade them to support us. Threats to life and island life are growing. It's becoming more obvious as our economy has heated up and more visitors have showed. Here's some pictures of the damage that's being done. The way, we, the way we would describe it is our community has matured. It's become more diverse over the last 10 years. And it really needs some caring leadership. Growth is going to happen, but it must be sustainable and it must consider the character of the islands. That's not happening today. The feasible, financial feasibility in the 2004 study uh, without determined that it would not be detrimental to Glen County or to Brunswick, and we need island leadership. We're very short on island leadership. This is our website. And this is our contact information. Uh, if you go to our website, you can, um, you can find almost anything you want. We've set up some work groups to study each of the services that are provided today. That's a big time commitment, but we appreciate people applying through the, through the uh, website for that. Um, and we have a committee, and the committee's put in long, hard hours on this. So any help that you could be financially or in time would be appreciated. I think that's the end of my comments, and we'll now open it up for Martin. Her, just like I am convinced when we get to the point that with Atwood, Jones, and Ligon, that we have to convince them of that and show them what I just said, I think it will be a sale we can make. And we met with Cornell Harvey, by the way, Chuck and I did. And he really wasn't in any, any way opposed to what we were considering. Uh, because he doesn't think it's really going to hurt. So that's where we stand. And by the way, I know George was in Milton, Georgia, and when Chuck mentioned that Sandy Springs had 88%, I mean 90% vote for incorporation, they had 88%. So where we got 55% in 2004, and people like me were totally opposed to it, I think we could get a substantially higher vote today. 70%, 75%, I don't know, but substantially higher than 55. I think what has changed, before I get to the next question that I've seen over the last 10 years is, I think the, the inhabitants, the locals who have lived here for a long time, were not in favor of the incorporation 10 years ago. That was my sense of it. Today, I found a different a different opinion from everybody. It's like, oh, well, I guess it's about time to do that. Able to support a bill and then drop a bill in the House that gets passed, a charter mm -hmm. bill that would establish the charter for the city, there's actually a first vote that would take place that would determine whether that, that uh, uh, vote for cityhood could be put on the ballot. So there's a referendum that takes place first to determine whether the majority of the people in, in, that are affected by it want it to be placed on the ballot. Then there's the actual ballot vote that would take place during a normal election cycle in November. But what we were able to do uh, through the, the process of incorporation was to create a situation where we could create our own ordinances, our own uh, protected areas, our own uh, uh, character areas. Um, Chuck mentioned the comprehensive plan for uh, the county. Um, the county is supposed to have a comprehensive plan done once every 10 years. The last one in, in Glen County was done in 2008. 
but it's also supposed to update that plan every five years, and Glynn County chose not to do that in 2013. So the comprehensive plan that's in place is, is uh, eight years old. It's due to be updated again in 2018. But the comprehensive plan does not have any force of law. All it is is a guideline that supposedly represents the policy of the, of the county or the board of, of commissioners at that point in time. Um, the last thing I guess I would say is um, there have been reference made to this being a long process. Um, for 10 years before we were able to incorporate the city of Milton, we were downtown in Fulton County for every single zoning issue that we didn't think was appropriate for our part of that county. I don't know how many people here have been active in the zoning process prior to the Flash Foods situation, but I would encourage all of you to get active. Go to the Island Planning Commission meetings, go to the County Commission meetings when there's something there that is not consistent with the way you want this island to, to look in the future. Because you gotta let people know that the majority of people here do not want those things to happen. If we sit silently by and only wait for the flash foods to come out, we will have much less impact than if we're there on a regular basis voicing our opinion. In the back corner, in the back corner. Yes, do you have a projected cost <laughs> estimate for police fire in school? Could you say that again, sir? Do you have a projected cost estimate no. for police, fire, and school? No, we're saying that the county will still provide most of those services and the tax will be the same tax it is now. It's not going to change that. We're talking about just culling off some of the services part. Yes, sir. The process that you just went through, wouldn't that involve a planning, uh, a charter commission uh, to hammer out uh, the, the blueprint that uh, is envisioned? And then a second part of that question that I have is, for all of these lands that are already zoned, uh, some contrary to the way that we would like for them to be used, uh, how can you go in, expect to go in and change the zoning of somebody's personal property? Well, I think, I think that's an issue in front of the uh, county commission now. And they're going to have to decide what they want to do. But you can do overlays that change and improve the zoning. Uh, you run into the issue of, of paying owners for any lost value if there really is any lost value. That's a complicated issue, but I do think there are options there. Um, I'll stand up if you need I'll stand up. Um, I think it's important to recognize where we are in this process. And some of the questions that are being asked would um, suggest that we have already gone through the study process, we've already gone through the analysis of the services to see how much do they cost, how much taxation would it require to pay for those, who can provide the service better, the county or a new city. These are all questions that definitely need to be answered and it's part of what will come from the Vincent study. Uh, as Chuck mentioned, uh, that's really a very authoritative uh, resource that we have at the University of Georgia, um, the Vincent Institute of Government. And um, we would work very closely, this committee would work closely, uh, and anybody in this room who would like to be part of this process, we surely are an open process and want as many of the community involved as possible. I personally have a bit of uh, hopefully healthy skepticism about the whole issue of incorporation. I can make an argument, of course, but I can make an argument for keeping things the way they are and maybe doing some things to improve that situation. I can also make an argument for finding something that's going to be a better approach. But I don't really know because there's an awful lot of information that I think anybody in the community is going to need before you can make an informed decision. And I think it's very important for us as a community to gather this information, to understand the answers. These are all great questions. They're questions that we need to ask, the hard questions, get the right answers, look to people like George who, now George is a resident here now, so we're very <coughs> lucky to have his expertise now in this community so he can draw upon what he knows happened in Milton. Maybe the same kinds of things will happen here, maybe somewhat different things will happen here. But the key thing is that through this process we'll gain the information we can get the legislature, hopefully, to give us the right as a community to weigh in and say, do we want to have a right to vote on this? 
and then once we do have the right to vote on it, we get to vote. Is this a good thing or not? And what you'll be voting on at that point in time will have come through this whole process. It'll designate what are the services in our initial charter that the new city of St. Simons and Sea Island would offer, the taxation situation, and all of those questions would be answered, and that's what you'd be voting on. So we can't tell you today what that referendum is going to look like. It will depend upon what the answers are to all of these questions. Very people talk about the commissioners here and the, the reps and what they've done for us. I've heard nobody speak out. None of these people speak out on this issue. Daily in the paper are complaining to the state the problems we've got here. I don't see where adding a layer of government's going to solve it. But we probably fund those people in Brunswick and going to get elected because we've got most of the money in the county. So even though we're 70 percent of the voting population, we're probably spending 70 percent of what it costs to get that elected. And if we had some commissioners that we have two that represent us, and I hear them talking none about this. It's very difficult to get somebody to run for commissioner. For that. Just before we move on, because I want to address the gentleman's question and comment in the back, as well as a couple of others. As I said, I'm a recovering chief financial officer, and so I have a slight bias toward things like profit and surplus and cash flow and all those sorts of things. Two things. First of all, anecdotally, from everything that we've seen in all those cities that Chuck put up there on the map, things have turned out positively. It happens in, in the case, I believe it's Brookhaven, I, I can't, I, I'm not allowed to quote the number. But there's a substantial surplus that occurred and a reduction of tax. A reduction of tax. You might guess of why that's occurred. You don't have to go into it. But we're not going into this thing to increase taxes. That's anecdotal. The other point, which Linda and others addressed, is we're not going anywhere until we get the Vincent stuff. I've, I've got, in my briefcase, I've got the Vincent study on Brookhaven. And what they did is they projected out every single expense, every single revenue. And that was presented to the citizens of Brookhaven. You all, we all, will know exactly what we're getting into. Final comment, in terms of creating government, I'd like to flip this around just a little bit. I think government that governs locally governs best. And in this particular case, we happen to be the locals. And we're not getting our best government from a very sizable county organization who seemingly has her focus on so, so if I understand correctly, a best case scenario for a timeline would be following this meeting, you're going to do fundraising to come up with the money for the business study. You get that back what, late summer, early fall. You look then at the results of that. Um, uh, if that uh, is positive and the three legislators uh, agree that it's positive, then the three of them would go into the legislature in January and drop in a measure of January 16. Uh, and that measure, uh, if it passed the legislature, would result in a question on the general election in November of 16 would be the <coughs> recommendation. Did I hear that correctly? That's, that's, that's the best case. A perspective from the side of a fence of having been employed by a planning and zoning department for a municipality. The next would be as a business owner. And finally, having had the privilege of working with site selectors for economic development authorities. Um, the first thing I would say is what I'm watching very closely is transparency on the part of Glen County and particularly the lack thereof. I have read carefully the ordinances which have been drafted and I'm not certain who has written the drafted ordinances. However, I can tell you that they are extremely weak, and I would be 
exceptionally cautious about those. They lack clarity, they lack definition. I think where you do not have any definitive language, and it is my understanding that that definitive language is in the hands of the county attorney and has been for some time, where you're lacking that, you're papering over something that's already in existence that may be better than what this, these proposed ordinances replace. The second point that I'd like to make is that it's very troubling to me to see the lack of accountability and to your point about no representation for St. Simons Island, there clearly are people in positions of authority who have been allowed to produce a mediocre performance. And now I will speak from the business owner perspective. If I ran a business the way Glen County is being run, I would be out of business. <laughs> The third thing that concerns me is that there is no remedy for, that I can see in these ordinances for a lack of enforcement. And as I continue to read in the newspapers about the issues which plague Glen County, especially right now, enforcement is an issue which has a rich history. And let, again, let me say the lack of enforcement. Um, that's something that no one in this room should be proud of. It's something that everyone in this room should be very concerned about. I think that what's important is to know where the potholes are, and I learned a long time ago it's very critical to pay attention to what people don't say versus what they do say, to pay attention to what people don't write versus what they do write, and it's in that gray area that you find politics. And when you have politics at play, I think we all need to be very careful. Um, the last thing I will say that is very important to me is that this is probably the most unique and special community I've ever had the privilege of being part of. And I'm hopeful that people will step up. I'm hopeful that people will take a strong position. I'm hopeful that people will realize that sometimes it's not enough to live in a community. There are times when you have to create a community. Thank you. Hi. Um, one thing that frightens me is that if we wait two to three years, if incorporation is to come about, what are we going to be subjected to on this island between now and then? And I think there needs to be some opportunities of taking Glen County down to the courthouse. Now, I want to commend the people of Brailsford. These retired folks have scrapped together money to sue Vasek Haight, who has been a major developer on this island, and I commend them. And I've reached out to the folks at Mariner's Landing and told them we had a private donor from Sea Island that was willing to sponsor them at the courthouse. And I think that we're gonna have to do something to put the brakes on before we have to go through three more years of this horrid situation of not only our Coastal Resources Division being abused by Glen County, our Shore Protection Act, under Gora, Georgia Open Records, we've already gotten copies of these letters of permission that have gone out. And they're, they're misleading, they're misinformed, they're inaccurate. We got the environmental reports that had to do with these 83 trees that were cut. Those trees did not have to come down. There was false information on those reports that were sent in. And 14 items on the consent agenda for Glen County last month, uh, this past month at the beginning. This is ridiculous. And I think the only thing that's going to stop Glen County local government is for us to have some writ of mandamuses and get them to the courthouse. And I would not only be interested in helping finance this study, but I'd also like to contribute to some type of a fund for us if we need to hire a lawyer to stop some of this. Thank you.
website so everybody can share it with everybody else and we're not we're representative of a small group of the whole big island but we got to get other people involved and know what's going on we want to limit as much of the emotion of this event as we can there's a lot of things we don't have the answers to right now but the goal is to get the damn answers you know we can't make decisions you can't make a good decision to have good information it's going to take some time to do that and I think thankfully we got people who are willing to step up and start moving in that direction because something needs to be done. If not now, when? If not us, who? And that's the right kind of way we have to think. I'm going to make one more interjection and shut up. And I think <laughs> John Dow back there wants to make a comment. But there's only one reason you're all here, and that's your irate. What you have succeeded in doing by being irate is you have caused the moratorium. That moratorium wouldn't have existed if you'd sat back on your easy chair and watched TV. Uh, and we've also got at least some consideration, though as was described earlier, and this is what I've heard from several legalese type folks, uh, these new uh, ordinances that are coming out really probably are not worth the paper they're written on, though they are at least a step in the right direction. So you guys, by being here, being involved, being upset, you have certainly accomplished, if nothing else, two things, a long moratorium and at least consideration of some uh, different ordinances. John, you got the floor. I'm going to go against the flow, but put, um, the footnote is I agree that change is necessary. I served on the Commission Planning Zoning Board for eight years, chairman last four, and I will tell you, at no time ever did we have a crowd like this for anything. Not once. And I have said on multiple occasions when people came and they complained, y'all showed up at the two-minute warning. The rules were written, and our job was to enforce the rule book. I have said, and I completely applaud the county commission, and I agree with Martin, what has been proposed isn't the end all. It's a beginning point. Lisa, your point? You don't have two or three years to go through this process. There is something today and now that if you all rallied and got behind and started to focus on the proposed ordinances, let me, let me say that you've got two issues. One is writing the rule book. And by default, and, and I, I took a lot of criticism because I wasn't in favor of subdividing two residential lots into three and as a result, we had five condos built. It was the law. It wasn't my place to apply common sense. I had something to abide by. If not, we were going to be in court. And then all this time and energy. The main thing I want to say, this whole process is going to be very time consuming to incorporate is a way. And there's three of these guys here right now. you got Commissioner Coleman, Commissioner Strickland, and Commissioner Provenzano. 
if you want real change without, and, and I don't know, incorporation may be inevitable, but if you want something to preserve what exists today, get involved now with those ordinances. They will be adopted probably within, I don't know, what, three months? In three months, you're going to have a new, new rule book. And everyone coming in will be governed and judged by that. I'll say to you, incorporation, I've listened to everyone, it's a long, arduous process. But the change in the existing ordinances is here today and now. This is the time to write the rule book. And I encourage you to do that. conflict about speaking. I am the property that is next to Brailsford Plantation or Landing. Um, and what I can say is that I agree and disagree with a large bit of what's being said. I do not believe that the ordinances being rewritten is necessarily the catch-all. For one thing, the property that's being developed next to us, if the ordinances that are currently on the book were enforced, would be um, I'm not quite sure that I agree that talking to the commissioners changes anything because for those of you that follow our progress, this all started for us on June 17th. We started the process of disputing some of the errors that we found that went before the Island Planning Commission less than 10 days later. What we have discovered is that in Glen County, there is no process for an affected property. A developer can go and can pretty much claim whatever they want to, and once it is approved by the planning commissions, there is no recourse for an impacted property. It keeps going through. I'm a lifelong resident of Glen County. I have never been in favor of incorporation. At this point, I'm willing to listen. 